All right, so hopefully this is a quick video, hopefully, <laughs> we'll see, where I'm gonna just uh, demonstrate what it takes to add a new presenter model and a hook to a code base. Uh, and the intent is just to kind of empower people uh, to do this. So let me just start out by getting into my work doodles here. Oh, come on, why aren't you working? There we go, there we go. And uh, let's get to a new page. Where are you at down here? Okay, so let's just remember the lay of the land, what we're working with here. If you remember, over here, we've got entities. This is this is our source of truth. This is what the thing is. In our particular example, these entities, we're going to be working on a tool. Uh, we're going to make a hook that will um, update whenever the tool state changes. <clears throat> and so the state of the tool, whether or not it's enabled, whether or not it's selected, uh, maybe whether or not it's shown, it's label, all that stuff, that should be held in an entity, right? And then the way these things work is typically you have a use case coming in here that acts on the entities. And then um, we won't worry about that. We're going to assume that's all taken care of. But what we are going to work on is we're going to have a, present, a presentation model, a PM, that is going to be... Um, I'm going to draw the arrow differently, but it's a hollow arrow, which means uh, the flow of control goes the other way. But this PM, when it's created, it needs to uh, register as an observer. So this PM is observing whatever entity we're looking at. And so we're going to observe the tools entity specifically. Um, and so whenever the tools change, they have an observer system in there that will notify. It'll send a message down to the PM saying, hey, something has changed. What this PM is going to do is it is going to create and send out um, another thing called a VM. This is the view model. Now, this is just an interface. So I'm going to draw it like this. So this is an I. This is not a class. Why am I drawing everything sideways? Sorry about that. Um, this is a view model. This is going to be a, an interface. So this will be just um, a single use. You won't. There's no functions in this. It's just data. And it's going to be specific data that the hook will use. And so this is going to be used by a React hook. So I'm going to draw a hook up here. So this is a hook, which is then going to be working with the uh, UI, the, we're just going to say, let me grab another color here. And so this is going to be React out here. Element. Okay, so this VM is going to get transitioned. Oh, let's pick that color. It's going to get sent or picked up. Well, the hook is going to know about the VM, okay? Just a side note. The hook is going to be responsible also for creating the PM. So, okay, so when the hook becomes, so think about the life cycle of this. A component shows up that is going to be using this particular hook over here, right? That component instantiates the hook. It's, you know, that's in the script. Use hook, and it's going to return probably this VM. Well, that hook needs a presenter model. So this hook will be responsible for creating the presenter model, which is then going to subscribe itself or become an observer of the entities. Okay, and then every time the entities change and something needs to be republished, there's a new, there's a change to the view. The PM will send a VM, a view model, to the hook and say, "Here's the, here's here's what you should be displaying." Since the hook is creating the PM and the PM is be, is registering as an observer, we also need to take care of the situation where the hook dies. So in React, what would happen is this component would not be rendered anymore. And when the component's no longer rendered, the hook goes away. So we need to use a cleanup to delete our PM. And when we dispose of our PM or delete our presenter model, presentation model, we need to make sure we unsubscribe from the entities because we don't want a bunch of these PMs just floating around out there getting notified. All right, let's get into it. Let me pause this and I will flip over. All right, we're back into here. Let's get into our code. So <clears throat> code has, or our projects tend to have a, a folder called presentation models or, P, or presentation managers. Sorry, these are managers, um, not models. Uh, presentation managers. They manage the presentation of the entities to the view. So we're going to come in here and we're going to create a new presentation manager uh, in the PMs folder. 
Um, and we're going to call this um, tool PM. I like to add PM at the end just so if you're looking at scripts, you can see, okay, this is a PM. Let's go ahead and create a tool uh, PM.test.ts. Now, we already have a tool list presentation manager or presenter manager, uh, presentation manager, but that's for the whole list of tools. These PMs are going to be specific for an individual tool, for a unique tool, so like the orbit tools. So let's go ahead and uh, get this guy. Let's close this guy down. We'll bring this over here. Um, let's go ahead and get our class up and running. These are a state. Uh, these are a class because um, they need to be. We need to hang on to them. It's not just a function you can call. They need to be disposed of. Primarily, they just need to be disposed of later. So these things come and go. Presentation models are constantly created and destroyed based on how things are going on in the sim. Okay, so let's go ahead and make a class. Uh, we're going to export this class. Export class, and it's going to be called Tool PM. All right, and let's go ahead and throw our constructor in here. The way I've, I've landed on doing constructors is uh, we have this thing called the entity context floating around, and the entity context holds all the entities that we have created. We're just going to bring in, that's one thing we're going to bring in is the entity, entities, E-N-T-I-T, -E the entity context, and then we'll take out the ones we want to use inside of our constructor. Because we're going to be focused on an individual tool, we also need to be told what tool are we looking at. So we're going to do a tool, and this is going to be tool type. So this is a uh, comes from the, you can see both of these are coming from the entities folder. So that's okay. This is a, this is a PM, a presentation model. So it's looking in, and uh, it can reference the entities. So we're going to get a tool type and the entities we need. All right. Now, another thing we're going to need is we're going to need a callback function. So this script is going to be observing entities, the entities, and waiting for changes. And when it has a change, it needs to form up its view model and send it to somebody. So we're going to need uh, the view, the update view call, update view. And this is a function that we're going to call. We're also going to need a... Um, uh, our view model. So this is an interface. So this is the pieces, the bits of information that we're passing to the to React through a hook that we expect React to use. So we're going to go an interface. Uh, we need to export this, but let's go export interface. And I like to call them just tool VM. And uh, we're going to have a type, which is a tool type. It's just always going to be whatever we turn back. Maybe we don't even need that. No, we're not going to need that. We don't need a tool type. But what we are going to need is is selected. And that's going to be a Boolean. And is enabled. I'm doing is enabled. I had a little discussion earlier with uh, Jordan about this. He's going to want is disabled. But what I'm going to do is uh, we're going to do a refactor to show how we would correct these things next. So Boolean. So we're going to send two Booleans uh, to, the, to the view model. Or out, out in the view model. All right, is selected, is enabled. All right, and so now we know that this update view, VM, is going to be uh, tool, tool VM. So whenever we pick up a change in the tool states, we will update the hook, really is what we're going to be updating, with this function call. So the hook will be waiting for this guy to get called. Okay, let's go ahead and form up our, let's go over here, we're going to switch over, we've got, we've got this view model up to, or this presentation mo uh, manager up to a point where it's going to, it compiles, doesn't really do anything. So, <clears throat> let's go ahead and get our tools, or our tests running. So let's go, I like to do tests starting out by making a test rig, so uh, we're just going to do a function, make test rig, and that's just uh, every test will call this thing to get set up, so we don't have to set up the entities every time. We know we're going to need the entities, uh, and that's going to be uh, make entity context. What? Make. Give me a second. My imports are not working, and I don't know why. Pause. Okay. Got the import to work. <clears throat> For some reason, it didn't work. 
All right, we know we need to make an entity. Um, doesn't matter which tool we're using, uh, but oh, we need to make our view callback. So the way I like to do that is a, uh, just make a view that is a jest dot function. So that's just a simple uh, jest tool, because um, this actually let's go and just make this a little easier. Update view is going to be a jest function, and then let's go ahead and make our pm. Uh, so we're going to do a constant pm is equal to new tool pm, and uh, we're going to pass in our entities. We're going to pass in our, we're just going to do, let's just use the orbit tool. Um, I don't think it specifically matters what tool we use. We'll see. And then we're going to pass in our update view. So these directly relate to these over here, our constructor entities, tools, and update view. Entities, the tool we're going to use, and then an update view, which is the function. All right, finally, uh, we're going to return our test rig, which is the entities, is what we're, we're gonna need those. We're gonna need our update view and we're gonna need our PM. Okay, so first thing, function. Add a little space in here. Our first test. One thing that's important whenever you make a PM is the view needs to be initialized. So as soon as the PM is made, we need to update the view. So the first thing we're gonna do is test um, the view is initialized. And uh, what are we gonna do here? So we're gonna do this, and we're gonna do this, make our test rig constant. So here's our rig, making the test rig. And in this, we're just gonna grab the view, uh, update view. And the test is really simple. We're just gonna expect updates view to be called easy peasy now let's get our test running down here npm test when it fires up <clears throat> we will isolate it to this one i like to do this way come on now so we're going to do p uh, tool pm all right i'm expecting this to fail because yeah it's nothing's calling it all right so let's come back over here let's start building this thing out so we're going to take uh let's we'll store our private private uh update view and that's the same vm tool vm is going to go to a, a void this is the function our, our update thing okay and we're going to do a little private uh do update view and we'll make this into an arrow function so we avoid this conflicts and we're just gonna let's just call it update view and we're gonna need um some stuff is let's just stub in some variables here we're gonna do this uh, uh let is selected equal i don't know uh, false we'll just start out with these guys and let is enabled come here you is enabled equal false and then we are just going to pass these guys back and okay so we got that going now we do this uh, we're going to store this so this dot update view is going to be what we passed in update view and then we're going to go ahead and call it so this dot do update view so this will initialize everything that should pass our test now let's make sure our tool initial conditions are being passed out so what we'll do is we'll go back up here to our rig and we'll set this thing up so we're going to do entities um, tools we're going to go ahead and um, set tool enabled and let's make sure let's just set our orbit tool to enabled and let's go ahead and set our orbit tool to selected set tool selected set selected tool oh, okay set and selected tool is um orbit <clears throat> okay so now what we can do is uh we can make sure that these things are being applied because we know how it's supposed to start so we should have uh essentially an is selected and is enabled should both come back as true so here's another way we can do this. Let's expand this. We're gonna set of just being called. 
we're going to see if it's called with this into this object with the way we want it. So we're going to say to be called with. And now we're going to do this other little tricky jest function. We're going to do an expect object containing. So what this does is it's uh, it's just going to check to see if the object that is being passed to update view contains is selected, and that's going to be true. Oh, not tree walker. I don't know what that is. True, and uh, is enabled. Ah, oh, come on, enabled. Sometimes I wish I could delete half of these, more than half uh, of those auto completions. I never use any of that stuff. All right, so now we're going to check that. So we're failing, of course, and uh, we you can see we're receiving falses. So let's go ahead and uh, set this up so we actually pull in our tool stuff. So we know what tool we're going to use, <clears throat> but let's store the. No, we need our. Okay, so private. We're going to store our tool type. Tool type is going to be um, tool type. And so this dot tool is going to be equal. We need to store this tool. All right. Now we're also going to need our tool repo. So because we need to grab the tool. So private tool repo is going to be tools. And that comes from our also. No, oh, that's from. See, this is one that gets you. It's not Babylon. We want to get our tools from our entities. So now we got a tool repo. And that's going to come from our entity context. This dot tool repo is going to be part of our entities tools. All right, so we're grabbing our tool repo. Now up here we're going to do um, uh, constant tool. It's going to be uh, let's name this tool type. There we go. And now we're going to do this dot tool repo dot get tool of tool type. Now, here we go. Tool dot is selected. Is that tool dot dot enabled? Is that all right? I'm guessing that passes. Hey, it does. Cool. Let's do a little reformat. Let's actually do these as constants. We don't need them to change. Okay, so we're getting there. Now let's check and see if our PM gets updated when our tool state changes. Okay, so let's do this. So we're going to do T uh, view is updated when a tool when is deselected. When tool selection changes. Okay, so we're going to do this update view. Let's get our entities into here. And we're going to do this now. So, <clears throat> we know we get a call at the beginning for our, our view to update. So we need to go ahead and just do a mock clear. So remember this is an update, this update view is a jest function. It's just a way to track if things are called. And so during initialization, so right here, the update view is called. That's what we tested right here. So if we're gonna test other calls, we need to make sure we Mock clear is what it's called. We clear out those mocks, those calls that have already happened. So update view dot mock clear will reset that jest function and allow us to check and make sure it gets called again. So now we're going to do entities dot tools dot. So we were selected. Let's see, we're doing selection. We were selected. Let's select something else. Tools dot get uh, set selected tool. And we just want to do something that's not orbit. Let's do zoom. All right, so we were selected. The tool was selected. Somebody changed it. For some reason, it changed. Now, this should update. So we expect uh, update view to be called with. We're going to do this trick again. We're going to see. We don't need to check the is uh, enabled. We're not checking enabled. We're looking at is selected. So all we're going to do is check for is selected. Um, to be false. All right, that should. There we go. So that's our test for that. Now let's see if that works. So uh, it's not because we haven't added ourselves as an observer. 
So this dot tool repo dot add observer, which is this dot do update view. No, we don't need the brackets. Just that. All right, there's that. Let's see. Oh, I kind of expected that to pass. Set selected to zoom. Tool selected. Get tool tool type. What did we get? Tool add observer. This dot up. Update view. Hmm. I expected this to pass. Give me one second. Okay, silly mistake. <laughs> uh, I'm not storing the update view uh, <laughs> before I call it. So we do this, we do this. No, is that it? That's not it. Tool repo, entities, tools, add observer. Okay, uh, really silly mistake. Uh, I forgot the, um, so <clears throat> what I said here was, um, I expected it to be called with this very specific entity or uh, uh, object, and uh, it's not. It. I really want to check is expected to be called with an object containing is selected, because we we're not checking is enabled. So this should be false. That should be. Let's see if I got it right now. There we go. Cool. Okay, let's do one more check on this updated. So <clears throat> PMs. They're triggered every time that entity changes. PMs, most of the time, feed, well, they always feed a view. And updating views can be very expensive. So we want to do a little bit of error checking. You'll notice we're checking one tool. We're checking uh, uh, Orbit. So what that means is that repo, the tools repo, could could trigger a change. And it could, you know, if we change the uh, the... I don't know, the all tool to be enabled or disabled, that, that's fine. But we don't need to redraw our orbit tool. We don't need to send an update out to our our hook um, to let it to tell it something has changed. Now, the hook might catch it, but let's just be thorough and make sure we're not spamming this thing. So let's do another test that's similar that doesn't call. It only checks for changes in the um, selected tool. Update view is updated when the only view is updated only when the tool selection changes. Um, or maybe another way to say this, well, no, only uh, only when the tool changes. So let's do this. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna say, we're gonna kinda do the same thing, where we're gonna come in, we're gonna set the selected tool to zoom. We know that's gonna trigger an update, that's fine, because we were enabled, but let's go ahead and clear our views. Now what we should do, is we should be able to flip all over and select a bunch of tools selected um, that are not us, like pan and uh, all and you know chalk line. And we do not expect us to get called. So we're going to expect uh, update view not to be called. Okay, so. That's our next test. Great. No, it's not passing. I didn't expect it. It shouldn't have passed because we got to do a little logic because we're not checking. We're just anytime we uh, anytime uh, our observer is kicked off, we just send it out. So what we need to do is kind of cache the previous version and make sure there's a change. So we're going to do this um, private um, previous previous is selected. And this is going to be an optional um, boolean because we don't. The reason why we leave it optional is we don't know what it was at the very beginning. So we want the first one to run and kind of set everything. And then what we do is we do this previous this uh, previous is selected equals uh, is selected. All right, and then we're going to do a check up here. We're going to say if is selected equals 
this dot previous is selected, we're, we're out of here. We don't need to run. We don't need to update because the selection hasn't changed. You can see we're going to do the same thing. We'll probably you can guess we're going to do the same thing with enabled. All right, let's do this same thing with enabled. We're going to watch uh, and see if um, a tool is enabled. So uh, view is updated when a tool uh, enabled state changes and only when tool enable state changes. Okay, so we're going to say set tool enabled this time. And this time we're going to do orbit because we're working on the orbit tool. And we're going to say false because it was enabled. We, we set that up in our conditions up here. We set enable to true. So that should change. And what we should get out of this is uh, we should check for this. And uh, let's just do a quick dot only just to run this test because this test is failing. Oh, and it's not working. Oh, it's probably because we're doing this. So uh, we're, we're probably getting stuck right here. Let's see. If I take this out, there it goes. Okay, but we want to keep that in there. So what we need to do is add our private uh, previous is enabled. And that's a Boolean. And now we do this uh, little and and is enabled equals this dot previous is enabled. And then down here, let's add this and here. We're going to do this dot previous is enabled equals is enabled. All right. Now this one should start working once we get it into the, uh, let's do this. Select. going to do this a few times and we should oh yeah we got to set it this way first there we go so we set it disabled <clears throat> and we run a few things and uh, and it should it should be fine okay good I think we're good there so that's a really well, well no no one more thing remember we added an observer so uh, we need to make sure we clean up after ourselves so we're gonna do a public dispose and that will take care of turning it off so the way I like to do these we do test um, PM can be disposed all right so we're gonna be able, we need to make sure we can unhook the PM is really what we're doing so let's grab this guy and we need to make sure we grab our PM in here. Now, what we should do is um, essentially, we're going to say, P, uh, we're gonna go ahead and update view.mockclear. We'll clear out all the previous calls during, you know, that happened during the um, initialization. Then we're gonna do a PM.dispose. Now, what should happen is, all these things we change. So we're gonna change the selected orbit tool like we did up here. Uh, we're going to set uh, our orbit tool to false, so it's not enabled. These should trigger changes, right? Because we, we've already tested they do. But now that we've disposed, we should be dis um, we should not be notified of any changes in the entities because the dispose should remove the observer. So now we go back up here and we expect this not to be called, and it's going to fail because we have not detached. So detaching is really simple we just need to do this and remove the observer Ooh, that's not right uh, remove observer that should pass all right excellent we have a fully tested pm so this is a presentation model that sends out uh, a couple things so let's flip over to a react hook real quick so we'll run into react hooks and we're going to call this use tool Use tool, easy peasy. So we got our use tool. Um, let's see, export function use tool. And uh, we need to be told what tool we're using. So we're gonna have uh, tool is gonna be tool type. So this hook is gonna take something in and it's gonna return a tool VM like that. And that all looks good. Okay, let's get some things going on in here. 
we're going to need to store our, our, our current VM in a state. So we're going to use state, uh, and that's going to be uh, tool VM. And we're going to set tool VM. And the state is going to be tool VM, like this. It does want some initial conditions. So we're going to do, um, why don't you like this? Oh, I need to import use state. OK, so now this guy is going to want, let's see if I scroll to the top. I wish it wouldn't do that. but. Presentation tool list. Oh, we're getting the wrong tool VM. That could be a little confusing. Uh, that was from the tool list. We want this one. All right, so we have two things. Is enabled, we're just going to default it to false. And um, don't need a center. And then is selected is going to be false. Set these guys up as false. And then we're going to return our tool VM. All right, so that's getting that part working. Now we need to get, we need to remember, remember what we were saying in this diagram, the uh, hook, we're writing the hook right now, it is responsible for creating the PM and then the PM is gonna send the VM to the hook. So let's set that up. So first thing we're gonna need, uh, we're gonna need to make, we're gonna have to instantiate this um, constructor, this tool PM. Um, and so you can see we're gonna need our entity context to create our PM. And so that's where we get, we use our React context. So we're gonna do uh, use context, and then we're gonna call this app context. And then this is gonna be a React app context. And we need to bring this in. All right. And I'll explain this a little bit more, but we got to use a ref to hang on to our PM. Essentially, we're creating this, this class. We're instantiating, we're making an instance of this PM class. And later in life, we're going to have to dispose of this PM. So we need to hang on to that, uh, that instance so that we can call it later and kill it. So uh, the best way I found to do that is a use ref. So we're going to use a ref, and we're going to call this PM. And uh, this is going to be type of tool PM. All right. And we need to import our use ref, and we need to import our tool PM. All right. Now, now we get to the fun part. We're going to do an effect using all these magic things. Use effect. Here we go. So the input is going to be app context. We're going to do a cleanup. But let's go ahead and just clear that out for right now. What we want to do on this use effect is we're looking for kind of this startup situation. Because we only need to, so the use effect is when we're going to actually instantiate the PM. We have to make it. So to do that, we need to first, we're going to do this if PM.current, if not PM.current. So that means the, the presenter model reference has not been created. So we're still waiting to create our PM. And we have an app context because uh, the way these app, the way these React con app contexts work is this guy could come in undefined. Um, and so we have to wait for both an app context. So when we have an app context, okay, cool. Have we created the PM? If not, we're gonna do it. So now we're gonna do this PM dot current equals new tool PM. And we're going to pass in the uh, app context dot uh, entities. We're going to pass in the tool that was so that came from up here that was passed in up here. And then this is the callback function. Remember, if we go over here and look at our tool PM, the third thing we're passing in is our update view. So what we're going to do is we're just going to do a simple inline uh, function. We're going to do a VM because remember this function sends back a view model. And that's going to go and just set tool VM. VM. Okay, so you see what we did here? This, this is creating, this is the instantiation of the tool PM of this class. We're passing in the, the entities from the use case or from the context. We're passing in the idea, the tool we want to track. And then this is our callback function, and it's inline, so don't get hung up on that, but really that's this. This update view is right here. And you can see we're going to be past a view model. 
And we're just taking that view model, which is of type tool VM, and we're sticking it right into our use state. All right, so she's going right on into the use state. This use state will cause the re-render to happen and cause this hook to be updated. So that's all we have to do. This is how we wire the, um, the presenter model to, the, to React, essentially. Okay, remember though, we said we needed to do a cleanup. <clears throat> so um, do a little read if you guys know about effects, magic, magic. Uh, the thing is, they have a return statement you can put in there. And this runs when, um, when this, uh, this hook is being disposed of. So this is our cleanup. Uh, so what we want to do is pm.current maybe dispose. That's all there is to it. The reason why we have to do a pm.current, I don't know how it happened, but let's say uh, this thing runs and we never get an app context. So if, that, if this is always null, the pm current will never be made. And so we just don't have a PM. So that's why we do it that way. All right, there's our hook. Actually, I think that's all there is to this thing. Uh, I don't know if there's any follow-up. Um, so the PM is test-driven. So the PM is good to go. Uh, the hook, I'm going to pass that over to Jordan to wire it up. But it uses a tool. So I think we are are good. Yeah.